Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rohit and this is the day 32 of the service portal training. In this day, we'll talk about the angular dependency. What is the angular dependency and how we can create our, um, how we can use the angular dependency in our projects. And then um, using the angular dependency, how easy that we can, uh, you know, uh, use or create the object, okay? Uh, to demonstrate that, I have taken an example of this one, angular dependency. Let's see that what is happening in our, uh, this angular dependency, what capability it has. So this angular dependency is a multiple, multi-select dropdown. I'll open this in a, I mean, this is that, um, the link they have provided. And if I go back, this is the pro, uh, project they have created. Under this project, you can see if I go to the basic example, uh, they have created a drop down. So this is a drop down. And here you have an option called check all, uncheck all. You can select particular one. You can select uh, uncheck everything. So this is kind of drop down. And that drop down have the options called check all, uncheck all. So we are going to use this Angular dependency directly in our um, service portal without modifying anything. So how we can use the external uh, services or maybe external uh, code to our uh, widget itself without making modification like a um, we can inject that and then um, dependency we can inject that and then we can use their method and using their method how can we use our code that's the things we are going to talk about in our today's class for uh, demonstration purpose what i'll do i am going to create a quickly uh, a widget so let's going to create a widget So I'm going to create a page called dependency and then this is the term widget name is the dependency. So I'm going to create a new widget called dependency and a new um, test page called dependence. So right now our dependency pages uh, page is loaded and this is a dependency widget. So basically if you need any kind of documentation you can visit my website and then under this uh, this is the complete service portal series all this uh, so far we have discussed everything is documented here you can go through this document. Now let's see, so this is my dependency page and this is my uh, widget. First, we have to create our own dependency. So let's go back to the actual um, widget platform view. And meantime, I'll go to their documentation. What they are saying that to use this, uh, you can see these options or this value, what we can do. And the simply in this uh, HTML, we should write this one called ng uh, dropdown multi-select. So this is the old directive they have created. Under that, we can pass that uh, um, the J, uh, one uh, options. And this is the select model. Under this, we can pass another option. So see, example data is nothing but options is nothing but a JSON. We can pass that. So those JSON will be show as a drop down. And then uh, whatever value you will select that, that will be passed under this example model. So this is the example model array. Inside that, whatever value will be selected, those value will be added to this example model. So this drop down we are going to inject or we can say that this dependence we are going to inject in our widget. Uh, to do that, I go to this, this is my widget uh, here. Under this we have a dependency and here we are going to create our own dependency. So I click new. So what is the dependency? One dependency can be added to the over and over multiple widgets. So let's say that dependency can be used uh, many places. Okay, so uh, you can if you if I go back here under this uh, widget If I click edit button, you will be able to see there are many existing dependencies available So once you create a dependency that dependency can be used uh, any of this widget So you can see these all are dependency already available So you can create your own dependency and that you dependency can be used uh, over and over any of this widget. So I'm going to create a new dependency today to do that I'll scroll down and then click new under this we need to provide the dependency name so let's say that I'll put that angular JS uh, multi drop down something like that now you have a uh, include on page load. So whenever this page will be loaded, you want to uh, include this dependency or whenever you need it at that moment you need so that you can check that. And then here angular name. Um, so 
if you are using this dependency code to this angular name you can use that so let's uh, leave these two blank at that moment and simply save that so at the moment our dependency is created under this dependency you can include the css or maybe you can include the uh, uh, js file so javascript include you can use or maybe you can use the css uh, those two are used or those two are uh, basically uh, for the outsourcing purpose so let's say that this uh, this code i have not developed right so i have not developed anything in this code so i can um, outsource this code and I, I can use their function and i can uh, play around that right so these two are for this outsourcing so what they are saying that as per their documentation i should use this uh, link as the outsource link so what i look I'll simply copy this URL and then go back to this uh, JS dependency and I'm going to create a new JS dependency. Under widget dependency, we have JS dependency. And then let's say that you have a quote, you can just use the UI script and then add that. Otherwise, you can simply put that URL. So I'll change that URL and then whatever URL I have received, I'll put this URL. And then you can simply put this name call, uh, I'll say that Angular JS drop down or something like that. So if I can put anything, okay. So I'll put that Angular JS drop down, multi select. So this is my JS name, okay. And then submit that. So let's understand one more thing. We created a dependency. Under this dependency, we created a uh, JS include, and then JS include is nothing but it is pointing to a particular external URL. So if you don't have external URL, you if you have a raw JS code or JavaScript code, you can just simply go to this here and instead of this, uh, I mean, uh, JS include, you can just change the type to, uh, instead of this URL, you can just change to the UI script and then under this UI script, you can put the raw script that you have, like new UI script and then you can put this raw script under this here if you need it. So fine, in our case, dependency cases, we have this URL and I just put the external URL. So most of the cases you will be find out that um, uh, external link if it is verified um, documentation. I'll now go back to the widget and let's see that under this widget we uh, added actually uh, this is added to this, this dependency is added or not. So dependency is created under this dependency we have uh, JS include everything and let's see that widget have this dependency uh, added or not. So this is our widget. Under this widget, we have a dependency uh, added and under this dependency, we have JS include and everything. So if I open that dependency in the next step, so this is the dependency under this dependency, we have a JS file. In case, if you need the CSS include, you can use, but they are not saying anything, okay? So this is the demo. And now how to use that? So for that, if we click there, uh, they said that how we can use that. So to use that, let's say that these are the, um, in this HTML, simply I need to add this one. So I'll copy this code and then go back to our, uh, I'll refresh that widget first. So now under widget, what, uh, what they are saying, into the HTML, I need to put this one. So this is the div and this is the directive name. And here I need to put the option equal to example data. And then here SP model equal to this one, I need to put that. Now what we have to do under this one, uh, in the client script, what they are saying that we need to put this data, okay? So I'll copy this one and then, I mean, you should follow the documentation. Under this documentation, whatever is uh, basically needed, they will de describe that. So this is that uh, we need to put the, add the scope. So what they are saying, under this scope, we have example model and this is this example one data. So what will be happening, example one data? Under this example data, you will be able to find out whatever data um, should be as a drop down option. And then under this uh, example model, whatever value you as a user will be selected, that's, that value will be available here. Uh, what I'll do, I'll print this one also. So let's see what is happening. So I'll put that user selected. And this is I'm putting at that moment. So this widget is a very simple. So uh, using the dependency will give you the more flexibility that you can use any of this library function for uh, from.
from any other source and then you can use in your widget so let's say um, let's refresh our page and see what is happening now right now you can see under this top we have a drop down and this drop down have uh, this is the value that user is going to select that value will be shown on the bottom now if you select that you can see these all options are here and these all option are coming or this design is coming outsourcing of this um, this page okay so basically this is coming from this uh, cdnfgs so what they have they created their own library function they published that and this is coming from there only okay now if we uh, select any value let's say check all all this value you can see is coming or showing in the bottom okay and if we uncheck all you can see this is changing so if we select one you can see this is showing right now so these things this dependent i don't need to write any code i can just outsource this and i can go through the documentation that how they are they can have the smart text you can see so these these are the smart text they have that uh, various options right so i can i can see they have drop i mean these options so everything i i mean scrollable list so if your list is smart much more high you can do this add the scroll level button here so these all options i can simply play around and add that so for that i don't need to write any single line of code so i just need to be use that example code and it will be automatically um you know you need to, i mean fit in my use case so that is how the dependency is useful so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day